We looked at this type of question without the function notation in Math 99. I'm asking you to find the negative of the f of x, but we're looking at a rational function. And rational functions always cause a bit of difficulty. Remember, we had those set of lessons for solving rational inequalities because you had to think a little bit specifically about those. Now we're looking specifically at the negative f of x for a rational function. There are two possibilities here. When you're finding the negative f of x, the negative of the entire function, the negative is either in the numerator or in the denominator, never both. If I put a negative sign in the numerator and the denominator, I have a negative divided by a negative, which is positive. That's not what we want. We specifically are looking for a negative of the f of x. So the negative either in the numerator or the denominator. In case one, we have negative two x minus one all over x minus three. In case two, we have two x plus one all over negative x plus three. And in the second case, I would probably be tempted to write this as two x plus one over three minus x, just so that that negative isn't out in front. You need to recognize when you're checking your answer in a textbook that if you write it like this and the textbook shows you this, they mean the same thing. Be careful about that. Let's finish this lecture by looking at the difference quotient of a function. The difference quotient, I don't want that in red, is the f of x plus h, remember we just found the f of x plus h, minus the f of x, we did that as well, all over h, and of course the denominator cannot equal zero. The difference quotient computes the slope of a secant line through two points on a graph. Um, it's finding the average rate of change over some interval. In this case, the interval would be h. The difference quotient is a stepping stone in calculus, the thing that you're going to practice before you're finding the derivatives of a function. In this course, you don't need to memorize the difference quotient, but you will need to have it memorized for calculus. So it's a good idea to start memorizing it now, <clears throat> excuse me, because you'll have a lot of other concepts you'll be trying to memorize once you get to calculus. So we've got this whole big formula, f of x plus h minus the f of x all over h. And we want to find the simplified difference quotient for this function. I always suggest you do this in steps. First of all, let's find the f of x plus h. Why don't you pause your video and do that? Check your substitution. This x changed to x plus h. So each of these x's had to change to x plus h. So we've found the f of x plus h. I hope you squared that binomial correctly. The second step is to do the whole numerator. The f of x plus h, we just found that, minus the f of x. See if you can write that out. So you started with the f of x plus h. That was all of this here. And then we wanted to subtract the f of x. We're subtracting the f of x. That means we need brackets here. Did you simplify this? You had 3x squared minus 3x squared and 2x minus 2x. So we're left with 6xh plus 3h squared minus 2h. And notice that h is common. This is going to be important now in our third step, 
which is the whole difference quotient. The f of x plus h minus the f of x, we just found that, all over h. Now we said that h is common, so we can divide that out. And this divides out h, which is always the goal of the difference quotient. We don't want h in the denominator when we are finished. There it is, the simplified difference quotient. Let's try one more. This question isn't in your notes, so you'll want to get out a sheet of paper to work on this. Um, I know I said you didn't need to memorize the difference quotient, but why don't you give it a try? Pause your video, see if you can write it down without looking. So do you notice why it's called the difference quotient? The difference, because we're finding the difference between the f of x plus h and the f of x. Quotient, because we're dividing. All right, step one. Find the f of x plus h. Well, this was uh, the g of x plus h, not the f of x plus h. I fixed that. I hope you got this fraction here. Our second step is to find that entire numerator, the g of x plus h minus the g of x. Give that a try. So you needed to find um, your lowest common denominator. We had two factors, x plus 3 and x plus h minus 3. We needed to multiply each expression by its missing factor. The first term was missing x minus 3. The second term was missing x plus h minus 3. And we're multiplying the numerator and the denominator. You opened the brackets and remembered that you were subtracting all of this, and then we simplified. So of course we had 2x squared minus 2x squared, 2xh minus 2xh, x minus x, negative 6x plus 6x, and negative 3 plus 3, leaving negative 7h in the numerator. That was our second step. Our third step was of course the entire difference quotient. The g of x plus h minus the g of x, we just found that, all over h. So we have negative 7h over x minus 3 times x plus h minus 3. And remember, this was the g of x plus h minus the g of x. So that's what I've just written, all over h. Now this all over h is just divided by h. I'm gonna write that as a vertical division instead. Divided by h. Remember when we're dividing, we multiply, I don't know why it keeps bouncing. We multiply by the reciprocal. Our first expression stays the same. Times one over H. And so again, we can divide H out. Negative seven all over our common denominator. It's okay that H is in the denominator as part of a factor. We just don't want it to be a factor on its own. These are difficult. These require practice. I would suggest you go back, try these again, and go to the homework assignments in Pearson and do as many as you can, because we will ask these questions on your test, your final exam, and when we verify.